Hey, hi there. So today, we're going to start the final two chapters of Roll Dolls, Charlie, and the Chocolate Factory. So today, we're actually going to finish the story and find out what happened in the end. We just read about how all of the children kind of got lost in Willy Wonka's chocolate uh, factory, but Charlie stayed and Charlie and Willy Wonka have just shot out of the chocolate factory in the glass elevator. So today we're starting chapter 29. The other children go home. We must go down and take a look at our little friends before we do anything else, said Mr. Wonka. He pressed a different button and the lift dropped lower and soon it was hovering just above the entrance gates to the factory. Looking down now, Charlie could see the children and their parents standing in a little group just inside the gates. I can only see three, he said. Who's missing? I expect it's Mike TV, Mr. Wonka said, but he'll be coming along soon. Do you see the trucks? Mr. Wonga pointed to a line of gigantic covered vans parked in a line nearby. Yes, Charlie said. What are they for? Don't you remember what it said on the golden tickets? Every child goes home with a lifetime supply of sweets. There's one truckload for each of them, loaded to the brim. Aha! Mr. Wonka went on. There goes our friend Augustus Gloop. Do you see him? He's getting into the first truck with his mother and father. You mean he's really all right? Asked Charlie, astonished. Even after going up that awful pipe? He's very much all right, said Mr. Wonka. He's changed, said Grandpa Joe peering down through the glass wall of the elevator. He used to be fat. Now he's thin as a straw. Of course he's changed, said Mr. Wonka, laughing. He got squeezed by the pipe. Don't you remember? And look, there goes Miss Violet Beauregard, the great gum chewer. It seems as though they managed to dejuice her after all. I'm so glad. And how healthy she looks, much better than before. But she's purple in the face, cried Grandpa Joe. <laughs> so she is, said Mr. Wonka. Ah, well, there's nothing we can do about that. <gasps> Good gracious, look at poor Veruca Salt and Mr. Salt and Mrs. Salt. They're simply covered with rubbish. <gasps> and here comes Mike TV, said Grandpa Joe. Good heavens, what have they done to him? He's about ten feet tall and thin as a wire. They've overstretched him on the gum stretching machine, said Mr. Wonka. How very careless. But how dreadful for him, cried Charlie. Asked Mr. Wonka, he's very lucky. Every basketball team in the country will be trying to get him. But now, he added, it is time we left these four silly children. I have something very important to talk to you about, my dear Charlie. Mr. Wonka pressed another button and the lift swung upwards towards the sky. Chapter 30 Charlie's Chocolate Factory The great glass lift was now hovering high above the town. Inside the lift stood Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe, and little Charlie. How I love my, my chocolate factory, said Mr. Wonka, gazing down. Then he paused, and he turned around and looked at Charlie with a most serious expression on his face. Do you love it too, Charlie? Oh, yes, cried Charlie. I think it's the most wonderful place in the world. I am very pleased to hear you say that, said Mr. Wonka, 
looking more serious than ever. <laughs> he went on staring at Charlie. <laughs> yes, he said. I am very pleased indeed to hear you say that. And now I shall tell you why. Mr. Wonka cocked his head to one side, and all at once the tiny twinkling wrinkles of a smile appeared around the corners of his eyes. And he said, You see, my dear boy, I have decided to make you a present of the whole place. As soon as you are old enough to run it, the entire factory will be yours. Charlie stared at Mr. Wonka. Grandpa Joe opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. It's quite true, Mr. Wonka said, smiling broadly now. I really am giving it to you. That's all right, isn't it? Giving it to him, gasped Grandpa Joe. You must be joking. I am not joking, sir. I am deadly serious. But, but why should you want to give your factory to little Charlie? Listen, Mr. Wonka said, I'm an old man. I'm much older than you think. I can't go on forever. I've got no children of my own, no family at all. So who is going to run the factory when I get too old to do it myself? <laughs> Somebody's got to keep it going, if only for the sake of the Oompa Loompas. Mind you, there are thousands of clever men who would give anything for the chance to come in and take over for me. But I don't want that sort of person. I don't want a grown-up man at all. A grown-up won't listen to me. He won't learn. He will try to do things his own way and not mine. So I have to have a child. I want a good, sensible, loving child, one to whom I can tell all my most precious sweet-making secrets while I am still alive. So that is why you sent out the golden tickets, cried Charlie. Exactly, said Mr. Wonka. I decided to invite five children to the factory, and the one I liked best at the end of the day would be the winner. But Mr. Wonka, stammered Grandpa Joe, do you really and truly mean that you are giving the whole of this enormous factory to little Charlie? After all, there's no time for arguments, cried Mr. Wonka. We must go at once and fetch the rest of the family, Charlie's father and his mother and anyone else that's around. They can all live in the factory from now on. They can all help to run it until Charlie is old enough to do it himself. Where do you live, Charlie? Charlie peered down through the glass floor at the snow-covered houses that lay below. It's over there, he said, pointing. It's that little cottage right on the edge of the town, the tiny little one. I see it, cried Mr. Wonka, and he pressed some more buttons, and the lift shot towards Charlie's house. I'm afraid my mother won't come with us, Charlie said sadly. Why ever not? Because she won't leave Grandma Josephine and Grandma Georgina and Grandpa George. But they must come too. They can't, Charlie said. They're very old, and they haven't been out of bed for twenty years. Then we'll take the bed along as well, with them in it, said Mr. Wonka. There's plenty of room in this life for a bed. You couldn't get the bed out of the house, said Grandpa Joe. It won't go through the door. You mustn't despair, cried Mr. Wonka. Nothing is impossible. You watch. The lift was now hovering over the roof of Bucket's little house. What are you going to do? cried Charlie. I'm going right on in to fetch them, said Mr. Wonka. How? asked Grandpa Joe. Through the roof, said Mr. Wonka, pressing another button. No! shouted Charlie. Stop! shouted Grandpa Joe. Crash! went the lift. Right down through the roof of the house 
into the old people's bedrooms. Showers of dust and broken tiles and bits of wood and cockroaches and spiders and bricks and cement went raining down on the three old ones who were lying in bed, and each one of them thought that the end of the world had come. Grandma Georgina fainted. Grandma Josephine dropped her false teeth, and Grandpa George put his head under a blanket. And Mr. and Mrs. Bucket came rushing in from the next room. Save us, cried Grandma Josephine. Calm yourself, my dear wife, said Grandpa Joe, stepping out of the lift. It's only us. Mother, cried Charlie, rushing into Mrs. Bucket's arms. Mother, mother, listen to what happened. We're all going back to live in Mr. Wonka's factory, and we're going to help him to run it, and he's given it all to me, and, and, and... What are you talking about? said Mrs. Bucket. Just look at our house, cried poor Mr. Bucket. It's all in ruins. My dear sir, said Mr. Wonka, jumping forward and shaking Mr. Bucket's hand warmly. I'm so very glad to meet you. You mustn't worry about your house. From now on, you're never going to need it again anyway. Who is this crazy man? screamed Grandma Josephine. He could have killed us all. This, said Grandpa Joe, is Mr. Willy Wonka himself. It took quite a time for Grandpa Joe and Charlie to explain to everyone exactly what had been happening to them all day. And even then, they all refused to ride back to the factory in the lift. I'd rather die in my bed, shouted Grandma Josephine. So would I, cried Grandma Georgina. I refuse to go, announced Grandpa George. So Mr. Wonka and Grandpa Joe and Charlie, taking no notice of their screams, simply pushed the bed into the lift. They pushed Mr. and Mrs. Bucket in after it. Then they got in themselves. Mr. Wonka pressed a button. The doors closed. Grandma Georgina screamed. And the lift rose up off the floor and shot through the hole in the roof out into the open sky. Charlie climbed onto the bed and tried to calm the three old people who were still petrified with fear. Please don't be frightened, he said. It's quite safe. And we're going to the be we're going to the most wonderful place on earth. Charlie's right, said Grandpa Joe. Will there be anything to eat when we get there? asked Grandma Josephine. I'm starving. The whole family is starving. Anything to eat, cried Charlie, laughing. Oh, you just wait and see. And that's the end of Roll Doll's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So we've actually finished this whole book. I hope you all really enjoyed it. I hope that it was fun and entertaining for you. And I'm going to wish you all a very good night and say goodbye.